All right, what's up, everybody? Afflicted Gamer here. Welcome back to another Vigor video. So there are plenty of things in the game that the tutorial doesn't tell you, or at the very least, fully explain. So I thought I would go ahead and break a lot of those down here in this video. Uh, but if you did watch my tips for beginners video part one, part two, or even both, uh, you will hear a couple of things that I did mention in those videos. But hopefully, there's still something you can learn in this one. In no particular order, number one, when you are in the main lobby, right before you load into the encounter, if you press square on PlayStation, X on Xbox, and I believe it's Y on Nintendo Switch, then L1 or R1, so you can tab over left or right, you can actually see what the other Outlanders have brought into that encounter with them in terms of their weaponry. You can't see their consumables, so you don't know if they brought in mortars or portables or anything like that, but you can at least see what weapon they brought in gives you an idea of what you're going up against. If they're wearing a badge showing off how many kills they have, well, then you know if you're in an encounter with uh, someone who's been playing the game for quite a while and might be a bit of a tryhard or not. So either way, it's good information to have. Polaroid pictures. You'll find them while you are looting houses. Those are your clue as to where to look for a buried cache. There's no other way to kind of show you exactly where they are. You just simply have to learn the maps and with time you'll find all of these different locations. But they are worth learning because the buried cache has a lot of resources in it. It's got some food in it. It's got crafting items in it and it awards a decent amount of XP. A new feature that was added into the game this current season. Uh, we're actually about to head into season seven. So season six here you have the ability to now heal your teammates so if somebody runs out of their healing items somebody else on the team can now heal them which is quite nice red crates i'm sure you've seen quite a few of them and they are typically open when you come across them well if you find one that is closed that is an airdrop and it works the same way as the airdrop that comes in at the end of the encounter so if you pick it up you are marked on the map for everyone else to see so make sure you know where your closest exit is if you decide to pick it up the Bard House. Why do people go there? Now, aside from the lock container and time safe, Bard House is the go-to spot for the best loot and typically a lot of action. Once you get there, you need to rip off the wooden planks and interact with the safe to unlock it. it takes roughly one or two minutes to open and that's that. And when a new season drops, usually the Bard House has uh, the new weapons in it. So it's a nice place to hit up. Blueprints my number one most asked question as of late. How do you get blueprints? Quite simple. Crates. And you get crates by completing your daily challenges and of course by collecting the airdrop. On top of that you can donate food in the food basket behind your shelter and every Sunday once a week you can get depending on how much food you donate up to one crate of each rarity type. So do your daily challenges and go for the airdrop. Blue lock boxes. How do you open them? If you turn vibration on when you're scrolling over the different numbers, when your controller vibrates, that is the correct number. So do that for each of the numbers on the lock and simple, it will unlock. Signal detector. You can use it once every two minutes to see where the other outlanders are or where they might even be headed. If you see somebody near Bard House but not quite there, eh, most likely they are probably going there if the safe hasn't been unlocked yet. And one other thing talking about the safe is when you do open it, a little message pops up on the screen for everyone else that's still alive in that encounter that says the safe is being unlocked. So that means people know where you are. Just so be mindful of that. The comm station is the ability to interact with the airdrop. You could change its location. You can put radiation on it. You can do a number of different things with it. And you can use the same comm station more than once. It again has a cooldown like the signals detector does and you can use more than one comp station on the map and until the airdrop comes as long as somebody hasn't interacted with them and they are destroyed feel free to do what you want with them. Alright, phones. Another big question. If you interact with the phone either by ringing it or answering it you are now in a 1v1 duel with somebody else on the map. So they can always see your location, and you will always be able to see theirs. The winner of the duel gets some extra XP. Mementos. What's the purpose of the trolls, vinyls, and lighters? They are there simply to collect. If you collect them all, you get a badge and a title, except for the vinyls. 
uh, hopefully we get one in the future, but you can listen to the vinyls in your shelter. So while you're waiting for a friend to come online or waiting to head into the next encounter, you can actually listen to some tunes. And I gotta say, there's some really good songs in those mementos. Vigor has two other game modes, Elimination and Shootout. If you're new to the game, use them and practice, learn the recoil of all the different weapons and whatnot. Shootout also has some pretty exclusive and awesome skins, so that's another incentive to play it. The Lone Wolf mode is exactly how it sounds. You go into encounters alone, and you fight other teams of two, other teams of three, and sometimes you'll encounter other Lone Wolves. So if you're a sweaty tryhard, and I do not mean that in, in an insulting way, you need a challenge, well, Lone Wolf is the way to go. When you get out of, it, out of an encounter, make sure that you unequip the items that you collected that you don't need for the next encounter. Don't simply ready back up and go back in. Make sure that you have the right amount of ammo, and if you looted different weapons with different ammo types, make sure you unequip all of that stuff so that you don't bring it back in by accident. Now, this next one is just something that I wanted to point out because when I watch other people's videos, I hear them say this a lot. If you come across an area and it looks like it's been looted. A lot of people just assume it has been. Oh, somebody else has already been here. That's not always the case. It could just mean that loot didn't spawn in that particular area. It doesn't mean somebody was there moments before you or whatnot. It doesn't mean that somebody else is still around. It could just mean that there was no loot there. I just wanted to point that out. Crows, another amazing feature that was recently added to the game. If you hear crows go off, that means you're within the vicinity of an exit and somebody else is camping that exit. Shame on you campers. So if you hear crows, be mindful somebody else is nearby. Don't just run straight to the exit because they could be camping behind a car. <laughs> so yeah, that happened to me. Still not happy about it. Vigor has friendly fire. So when you're in duos or trios, be careful not to kill your teammates. Don't be that, that outlander. Please don't be that outlander. This also applies to the elimination game mode, so be careful, you can also kill your teammates in there, and if you do, you lose a bunch of points. It's not worth doing, so please don't bother. So, but yeah, there you have it. There are some things that the game simply does not tell you, or at the very least fully explain. Uh, other questions that I've got, like how do I get crowns, how do I get skins, the same way as the blueprints and weapons, out of crates. You can upgrade your antenna at the shelter so that you can generate some crowns daily, which is really nice. So, but yeah, other than that, I believe I covered all of the questions that I got. If you have any more, feel free to leave them down in the comments section, or if there's something that you think that I may have missed, of course, again, leave it in the comments section to help others out. But... For me, that's it. I'm out of here, guys. Drop a like on the video if you guys enjoyed it or, of course, found it helpful. Consider subscribing for more Vigor content. And don't forget that you can always follow me over on Twitter at AfflictedGamer.